Good evening, everybody. So today we are going to cover the uh, subject on feelings. Huh? So feeling is also one of our meditation object, and uh, feeling is very important to us because we feel all the time. So if we don't feel, that means we are like a block of wood or a stone, but we feel all the time. So the Buddha began with the basic types of feelings. So there are the three types of feelings mentioned by the Buddha. And monks, how does a monk leave practicing feeling contemplation? Herein a monk, when experiencing a pleasant feeling, knows I'm experiencing a pleasant feeling. And when experiencing a painful feeling, he knows. Or when experiencing a neutral feeling, he knows I'm experiencing a neutral feelings. Feeling is so important to us. We recognize feeling as happiness. When we feel happy, that is pleasant feeling, which the Buddha says. When you experience pleasant feeling, then we say, we are happy. But if we experience unpleasant feeling, then we are unhappy. So happiness to us is actually based on our feelings. So therefore, feeling is a very important subject for meditation. Now, how do feelings come about? We always think that feeling is there all the time, somewhere, somewhere in our body, somewhere in our mind. The feeling is there all the time. That gives rise to the idea that this is my feelings. It belongs to me. So, when people say something we don't like to hear, then you probably say, you don't say that, I'm hurt. Or you hurt my feelings. Because that feelings you think belongs to you. Then you say, you hurt my feelings. But feeling does not belong to us. Feeling has a condition. It arises due to a condition or some conditions and it passes away due to conditions again. Then how do feelings arise? Do you know how feeling arises? Feeling arises when there is the objects coming into contact with our six senses, then feeling arises. Now when we see something agreeable, something beautiful or something nice, then we feel happy. Or even we go sightseeing, we see something strange, something different, or colorful, or certain shape see something agreeable, then we feel happy. So people like to travel, but some people don't like to travel, but some like to travel. Some like, they have a lot of energy, they like to go sightseeing, go from country to country, they travel all the time. It gives them happiness, gives them a lot of joy to go to other strange places and see things that other people have not seen before, then he feels it's a happy life. Then he feels 
people look at him or her and say, "Wow, he's so fortunate, so fortunate because he can enjoy, can go all over the world and enjoy seeing, tasting a lot of different food, or smelling, or feel the four seasons: the snow, the winter, the summer." So object when come into contact with the six senses arises the feeling. So therefore, a lot to do with objects, seeing objects, smelling object, touching object, hearing object, and these object. Is beyond our control. Sometimes we can control the object. Most of the time, we can't control the object. It just appear to our senses, and that's where our feeling arises: pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral feelings. Neutral feeling is the object that are neither pleasant nor unpleasant. So we produce. Neutral feelings. When you walk along the road, there's nothing particularly nice to see or disgusting. Then you just have neutral feeling. Or if you are in a house, you're probably just sweeping the floor. It's not that exciting. It's not that interesting to sweep the floor. You probably have neutral feelings arises in you. But these we recognize as happiness or sorrow. So those who are lucky, as a Buddhist, we say good karma of the past. They have done something good in the past, and now they have all these pleasant objects appearing. They are staying in nice places. They are staying in beautiful with a nice garden. So they wake up. Early in the morning, they look out of the window. They see flowers. They see a clean garden. Then it gives them a lot of joy. Then they feel happy about it. And if they drive car, a big car, no traffic jam, reach the office, people say good morning, boss. Then they feel very happy about it because people respect them. Then after that, they go out and have nice food. Go to a nice, expensive hotel to have their lunch. Then they're happy about it. And when they come back, they see their children well behaved. See their wife happy to see them. Then they're happy. So it is indeed a very happy life. So such type of people mostly they're very satisfied. Very hard for them to meditate. Why? Because they are so happy. Why want to meditate? For what? Does not mean that people that you come here today here sitting all unhappy. It is not so. You have your happy time. You have your sad time. But there are people who are more happy, who have a very good life. So they are very happy because of these objects. They have a lot of money. They can buy a lot of things to satisfy their senses. They have a nice house. They buy a very nice thing to decorate the house, so they feel very happy in seeing all these things. There's one friend of mine. He's very artistic. He has a nice house, and he will sort of uh, keep changing the things in the house, which the wife is very annoyed when I. Uh, they're very happy to see me, and he will complain about the husband. Now he puts the flower there, the flower pot. Uh, after one two weeks, then he put the flower pot there, and then after that, a few more weeks, he put the flower pot there, and then and then he is so busy putting the thing here, there, there, there. You see, ah, huh? it's a waste of strength. It have nothing to do, so just shifting the thing around. But it gives him a lot of pleasure to see that the things fit there nicely in the corner, very nicely there. He feels very happy until after the next week. Then he see not so happy. Then he sw swift again to another corner. But he likes that. He's an artist. He can paint very nicely. It gives him a lot of joy, even though 
He don't have money to keep shifting houses. He spent his time shifting flower pot. It makes him happy. Makes him happy. But the problem is, in life, we can't have everything that we want. All these objects, we can't tell somebody from today onward. Please say only nice word to me. Cannot. You go out, strangers. You go to the office. They tend to say something you don't like to hear. Then you become unhappy. They become very upset. When your boss in a bad mood, even sometimes your spouse in a bad mood, say things you don't like to hear. It's like a knife that poke into your heart. So painful. Not because they want to say it, because they are unhappy. So they just say it. But it hurts a lot when you hear things you don't like to hear, especially from your loved ones. So in life, we meet with these objects, pleasant and unpleasant. So our feeling is like a yo-yo, go up and down, up and down. One moment we are feeling pleasant, happy feeling. Next moment we have very sad feeling or unpleasant feelings. And that makes our mind very disturbed, not peaceful, very disturbed. But the Buddha taught us that feeling is just feeling. It has its cause of arising, and when it arrives, then it passes away. But if you catch hold of the feeling, unpleasant feeling. They produce more mental pain, more dissatisfaction, more anger, more hatred, more remorse, more sadness. So meditation is developing the mindfulness to see things as they really are, suchness. No concept, no nothing, no plus, no minus. Just see it's arising, see it's passing away. Once you understand the phenomena of this feeling that arises because of object contact and your senses, and then if you watch it, it disappear. If you don't catch hold of feelings, then it disappear by itself. It disappear if you just watch it. Now the people get into a lot of mental suffering, a lot of mental pain. Sometimes become neurotic, become crazy, because they don't simply understand the nature of feelings. They can't let go of feelings, and feeling generate more thoughts. Once you have this feeling that is unpleasant. It conditions the thoughts, conditions the thinking. Then your mind becomes very revengeful. You think how to harm that person or how to hit back when you have a chance. Hatred. How to make him suffer. Feeling affects the thinking. Create negative thinking, and the negative thinking. Again, responds and produce more unhappy feeling. So, each one conditioning the other, make each one strong. It is like when two person is quarrelling. A shouted at B, B shouted back, and A shouted most louder, and 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 C raised his voice, and very soon comes the stick and the stone. It is like. Interacting A and B, but if one were to keep quiet, then there is finish. There's no quarrelling. If somebody say you are wrong, you are wrong, you are wrong, and you say yes, I am wrong. Any more quarrel? No more quarrel. Huh? Right not. But you say no, I'm not wrong. You are wrong, and the person say no, I am not wrong. You are wrong, and so nobody is wrong. So that is where the sticks and the stone comes, because nobody is wrong. So they will fight 
อันที่วันตายมายนั่น feeling the give each other more and more strong and it gets into lamentation pain grief despair becomes person becomes very depressed and and life is so sad and because they cannot get out of the thinking that these people harm me these people hurt me these people is not fair and he cannot get out of that feeling of unhappiness so he's trapped in a world of suffering made by himself my make nobody make that nobody can make us suffer if we don't want to suffer if somebody were to scold us we walk away he can't make us suffer we don't accept what you say you can't make us suffer why must we accept things people throw at us we don't accept it so we don't suffer so there is only one way to not let feeling control our mind is by developing mindfulness of watching the feeling so that is where feeling becomes an object for your meditation two types of feeling from the body consciousness three types directly goes to the mind from the seeing smelling tasting touching so it has pleasant unpleasant neutral but the body has only two it is pleasurable or painful but the body feeling is clear mind is subtle mind is very subtle to detect but as you gain experience mind feeling becomes more strong but normally for beginners the body feeling is very clear as you sit quietly doing nothing you sit without moving as you watch your body then you feel a lot of feelings arises from your body consciousness you have the cold air you have the numbness as you sit cross legged then you get the numbness you get a itchiness as the dust landed on your face or on your nose then you have the feeling of itchiness numbness pain various types of pain so it is good object for meditation to train your mind to watch the feelings that come and go once you develop the wisdom of understanding that this feeling is not yours it does not belong to you this feeling is not me then he could not control our mind otherwise at once we become very affected when we come into contact with this agreeable object or unpleasant object at once it catch our mind and it destroy our peace of mind then we get agitated we get disturbed then we quarrel or we don't want to see that person we curse that person because we get angry hatred arise but if we were to not oh feeling arises because it is unpleasant because this person is in the bad mood today okay if you practice loving kindness which we are taught here as well then you say may you be well and happy then you change your feeling feeling of kindness never mind never mind if he scold you never mind may he be well and happy he suffered enough already you think he's happy when he scold you no he's affected by anger so he is actually suffering he's burning do you think you feel happy when you scold somebody no sometimes there may be mothers and fathers around here and when you start scolding your children and scold and scold and scold until you can't eat food you sit there twano ah, but the, the children after that forget already 
become naughty again. Who suffer? The mother suffer. The father suffer. The son just sit there quietly listen. Nah. After that, he jump up and down. He forget. But the father and mother cannot forget. You think he's happy? No. If somebody is very angry, you say, okay, you're very angry. Huh? Okay, okay. Huh? Are you sit? Huh? Scold me. Huh? Scold. Huh? Non-stop, the better. Huh? And very soon, he have locked jaw. He got to see a doctor. He scold you so much, his jaw cannot move. You think he's very happy? No. He's suffering. So out of compassion, out of loving kindness, I forgive you. Okay. Because you do not know what you are doing. You don't understand. If you understand, you would not scold me. That is wisdom. Once you understand, once you are a meditator, you see deeper into the truth. Not just superficial, not just concept, just not relying on your emotion or your thoughts, thinking. You see things as they are. You become more able to handle the problem in life. Now, these are the usual problems in life. We experience this problem that everybody goes through. And we experience a lot of pain and suffering if we hold on to it. One thing, a lot of things we can't have, we feel deprived, that is mental suffering. You want promotion but cannot have. You want, have, you want luxury, neighbor have a new car, you still with your bone shaker. And you have something you don't want. You have a naughty children which you can't change with your neighbor. You have a lot of things you don't want. You don't want to be fat, but you are fat. You don't want to sick, but you are sick. We grow old, we decay, we have a lot of pain. Physically, when we age, we can't see well, we can't hear well, we can't eat well. Some have no teeth left. These are normal worldly suffering that comes with the body. So if you're a meditator, you learn to accept such things, that it is natural to decay, it is natural to die. So once the mind learns to accept and see things as they are, then it becomes peaceful, not affected by these objects that are unpleasant. Otherwise, the mind becomes greatly disturbed. Once you grow old, then you lament. Gone case already, now got white hairs already. Better find some dye, good one. We lament. Once we grow old, then who is going to look after us? Once we grow sick, who is going to look after us? Then what happened? When we grow old, we don't have enough money to live on. Then happen. The mind goes to the future, 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 future. Because of one unpleasant object, my flies and flies on to the past and to the future until our happiness is gone. Until we have all unpleasant feelings arises, then we become very grumpy. Then we grumble all the time, we scold our children all the time because we can't handle our life anymore. So the basic three types of feelings. And the Buddha continued with the other six types of feelings. 